Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at FantasyFootballProfit.com. And now your hosts, Craig and Jeff. Welcome everyone to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig Phillips, joined as always by Jeff Torrey. And today, we're going to talk a little auction draft strategy. Jeff, we just had our one of our big auction drafts today. So it's fresh in our minds, so we might as well talk a little bit about it because, I mean, every auction is different, so it's hard to talk about them really beforehand and give people a lot of good strategies. But right when you're done with it, you everything you, you feel like you're an auction draft master again, don't you? Yeah, it takes, a, it takes a moment to get back in the swing of things, especially when we've been doing a bunch of these snake drafts for listener leagues and, and just for fun. But uh, getting back into auction drafts is a whole different, you know, beast in general. And, you know, it just reminds me of how quickly you can be thrown if you don't have a plan in place. And I'll say one thing that helped me out today and that I'm going to talk about is RubeSheets.com, their new sponsor to the show. And I checked them out. I didn't give you the opportunity to check them out, Jeff. I should have probably a little, you know. It's not I see what I see what's going on. A little cheap you, on my saw. part. But Rube Sheets, I went and checked them out. And basically what you can do there is you go to their website, go to rubesheets.com, and you, you have a spreadsheet where you can pretty much put in all of your league settings. You get to put how many, you know, the roster spots, everything, the scoring settings, how many teams. And then the best part about it, this is what makes it great for auction, is you get to go and then put in any keepers that have been taken, what the values were. And then during the draft, as as everyone's actually being drafted, you input in there and they will recalculate the player values based on how the draft is going for you. Gives you even a better shot at figuring out, okay, what, what are the values really now? How much should this player go for based on who's gone and what people have gone for before? So I think I had a little bit of advantage today doing that. Yeah, I see what happens. You just uh, you don't you don't want to play fair, so you use rube sheets and dominate the draft. Pretty much, I feel you. Yeah, it it worked out pretty well. I love it. You can just pretty much do whatever with that. You can all the different possible settings. So go check it out, rubesheets dot com. Maybe I'll let Jeff check it out next week when we have our other big, our really big auction draft next week. So I'll let you try that next week, Jeff. Maybe we'll see. Oh, you best believe I'm going to use it. <laughs> so. The auction draft, we just got done with it earlier today. And, you know, true to form, you never know exactly what's going to happen in any kind of auction. So that's why, I mean, throughout the we, if we had to pick, obviously, auction drafts are our favorite by far. But to talk about it on a podcast every week, it's hard to tell people what to do. So what, like, what are your main takeaways from today? Do you have any, like, epiphanies after the draft on how things should go? Yeah, well, the main thing that I have to get back in my head is basically if you want someone, you have to be willing to pay for them. It's very easy to go into a draft and say, I'm just going to go for value picks. Like I'm going to find guys that no one values, but that's very difficult because if one other person really, really wants that player, you get in a bidding war. All of a sudden he's not a value. So if you do have a few key players that you're willing to overpay for in order to get on your team to build a, a solid foundation, Make sure you know who they are and go after them hard. That would be the big one. And for a very good uh, segue into that, you actually did have one of these guys. You wanted a running back and you went after him super hard. So why don't you tell us about that? Yeah, so well, ours is a keeper league, so it's slightly different than your standard redraft auction. So we each have two keepers in a 10-team league. So running backs are scarce to begin with in this. Running backs are scarce in a regular league. So this one, running backs are even more scarce. So... Basically, you, you have to know the top tier. Who are the top tier guys? And I, I it was Zeke. Zeke's the top guy to me. It was Even if you want to put him in the top tier, that I mean, the top four were, were all gone. It's just Zeke there. So you got Zeke and then Fournette, Cook, Barkley. So those were really the top tier in our draft. So going into it, I knew. For some reason, I believe it seems to be the case. The top guy in this, like the, the top running backs, top whatever, usually ends up going for cheaper. And if it happens early enough, people are still freaked out a little bit. They don't know what to do. No one's comfortable. So he goes a little bit cheaper. And then the guys after that end up going for way too much. So Zeke, in our $200 auction, went for $76, which when you first think about it, you think, wow, that's it's ridiculous, right? It's <laughs> a little a little much, would you say? 
Yeah, I mean, it, it's a lot. It, I mean, yeah, it is. But I knew there was four top guys. It's Zeke, it was Barkley, it's Cook and Fournette. So after I went for Zeke for 76, everyone's kind of like, oh, wow, you, you know, little little much there. But the next guy off the board was Barkley. Barkley went for 62. So he did go lower. The second guy went lower. But then it came down to Fournette and Cook, who ended up being people all of a sudden looked at their boards and realized, oh, crap, this is it already. If you want a guy who should be a top 10 workhorse back, you got to get one of these two right now. So Fournette went next for 78. And then Cook went right after that for 79. Just crazy pricing. And they both went higher than Zeke did. So, I don't know. That's I've seen this a lot. And I think that's kind of how it goes. The first guy doesn't go. I mean, the second guy, if there's like four guys, the second guy might go for cheap too. But the last two are going to go more than the first guy goes almost every time. Yeah, I almost I, I always think of it as like a tiny bell curve where I think it starts off pretty good and then you will skyrocket as the end of the tiers hit and people start freaking out and then prices drop off and you are able to get pretty much whoever you want whenever you want um but it it, it's very unusual and because that happened and there was only a handful of really top end running backs left this would bring me to the second thing i would say is don't have just one plan in mind be ready to pivot and it's exactly what i had to do because uh, I was already down 20 bucks because we're able to trade a little bit of money as well, draft capital. So I had less to work with. And since Craig set the market so high, I realized I wasn't going to be able to get one of those top four running backs. And then I was, at that point, I knew that I had to go wide receiver heavy instead and then take a uh, chances on some younger running backs down the down the line and hopefully one will pan out. So be ready to pivot when... Uh, kind of when things get out of control, you can't have one one set thing. Because if Craig wasn't able to get Zeke, say, all of a sudden I guarantee you he's going even harder for a four net. And then if he has isn't able to do that, then he would have to pivot to a whole a whole nother thing. And he probably would have went wide receiver heavy as well. I assume. Yeah, I probably would have switched it up completely instead of what I had to do because I'll say because of going for Zeke and spending pretty much everything to begin with. Which I'll just say I had I had already had Melvin Gordon and Joe Mixon to start it off. Jeff had. Le'Veon Bell and Tyreek Hill. So we both had pretty good starts there. But because of doing that with Zeke and spending all my money, I had to go for wide receivers. I ended up I had to switch up that and I couldn't get the, you know, the top end sure thing guys. I had to get the guys who have all the have the upside, but they're going to be cheaper because, you know, who really knows what they're going to do. So I got Brandon Cooks, Sammy Watkins, Randall Cobb, those kind of guys. So then I topped it off with like Calvin Benjamin, Jamison Crowder, you know, get get some of the like a safe Jamison Crowder type. So wide receivers aren't as good. It's a it's a bit risky, but that's what you got to do if you want that top guy in an auction. You just got to go for it. And, you know, I I want those top tier guys. So I took the risk and you didn't have to as much. I mean, you had a bell already, so you you were set. But you got you got Adams. I say you got Devonta Adams for pretty cheap. Yeah. And that was that that was kind of the bell curve though. Everyone was really freaking out about running back, so I kind of stole Devontae Adams out from underneath a bunch of people. Yeah, you really did. I mean, the the wide receivers in our draft went pretty cheap. Devontae Adams went twenty eight, Keenan Allen went twenty seven. I mean, AJ Green went thirty four, Julio went forty four, he was probably the most there. It's just in this draft, people freaked out about running backs. It just changes the whole complexion of everything. I mean, Christian McCaffrey went for sixty two. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, it makes a whole lot of sense, though, because there was not a whole lot of people left. And they were looking at their team and they're like, I absolutely need a number one, if you will. And I know he's not technically a number one, but if you don't have anyone, you got to pay whatever it takes to in order to get him. Because the other person, what else did they have? That same person had to take McCoy as well for 41, which uh, is actually not a bad value when you hear everyone else. But I mean, without those two, they are in very much trouble. So I'm basically, and I, I'm the one who actually nominated Zeke right away. And, and that was the third nomination. I just wanted to get it out of the way. Some people don't like to do it. They like to wait. And I, I've done that a lot where, I mean, I guess it depends on your situation. Like you're in a different spot. You had Bell already. You didn't need to set the market. You didn't need to do anything. You were you were kind of set with where you were. So well, you went nominated a kicker, I think, right away. Yeah, I, I actually I actually like to do that a lot. Uh, I'll throw a kicker out or a defense, especially for like Jacksonville. All of a sudden, you'll get 
I mean, even with ours, which I, I think we play with quite a bit of smart people, but I'm always amazed at how much people are willing to spend on a defense that they're probably going to end up streaming. So they'll end up spending four or five bucks and, you know, that's just money off the board. So I like to do that. And by the end, I, you know, I end up getting people I like anyway. So, you know, doesn't hurt me at all. Yeah. So because you could do that, I went the other way. If you're like, so pretty much if you're going in an auction and you know, you need somebody, if you're in a keeper league or if you're in a regular redraft, you need somebody. I think you just nominate them right away and you take it. You get the guy you need and get it out of the way. You can play in the rest of your draft. You're not waiting around because I've had that happen too many times where you're waiting on a certain guy or a couple of things. So you're going to let a lot of things slide by and all of a sudden it gets to that guy and it doesn't go like you wanted. You don't get him. And all of a sudden, what do you do? Your draft is kind of, you had that plan and now a bunch of other guys passed you by. So I think you just get it out of the way early, like right away. Just everyone's, everyone's still, you know, everyone's uncomfortable at the beginning. No one knows what quite what to do. Even it doesn't matter how many auctions you do. You never know how one's going to turn out. And so I think you just try to get it out of the way, get the big guys off the board, take what you want. And then shoot, like for me, I got Zeke. So I started nominating all the top running backs after that. That's all I wanted to do. Get the money off the board then after you get your guy. Right. And I wanted that to happen as well, especially after realizing I wasn't going to pay for one of these because all that money's off the board. And anytime a wide receiver comes up, people aren't going to be willing to spend quite as much. So it actually helped me as well. But I think you're absolutely right. I think there will always be one guy that you know, if I get him, I'm going to go down this route. And if I don't, I have to either get a guy that I like less, but in that position, or completely pivot. So I think for you, say it was Zeke, I think that's very smart in order to throw him out early, find out which way you're going, and that way you can, you're not finding out later when people are already off the board. Um, you know, so if you wanted to go wide receiver and all of a sudden the top three guys are off, you know, you'd be in trouble once again. And then in the way this league went, and I've seen it a lot this year, is quarterbacks aren't going for much. So I say don't spend on them. Why, why, waste, why waste any money on them? What did you end up with? You got Cam Newton for $3? Yeah, and I, I put him up for, what did I do? Oh, I think someone put him up for two, and I threw another dollar on, assuming someone would outbid me, and I'm not angry. I like Cam Newton. But, I mean, that just shows you no one was biting on any sort of QB. I think there was maybe two or three that want. Um, I think there was, I don't even there know. was three double-digit quarterbacks. Brady Brady went for 15. Rodgers went for 13, and Deshaun Watson went for 11. I believe those were the only three above double digits this year. Yeah, and, and well, Russell Wilson was kept. Oh, and but Carson still. Wentz was kept as well, so in ours. Yeah. But I think that – But, yeah, I mean – Wait. It just shows you. <laughs> Yeah, and so, I mean, a good, uh, you know, an example of that as well is at the very end of the draft, who did you end up with? I got Kirk Cousins and I got Drew Brees for a combined $3. <laughs> I mean, it's just stupid. You don't know You don't know if people are taking backups. You don't know what's going to happen. But especially with an auction, there is no rush at QB. Unless you have someone you absolutely are in fall in love with and you're like, I'm going to spend 10 bucks on them, which I wouldn't, as Craig demonstrated. I mean, even, you know, Cam Newton for three. I got top top five guy for three bucks. And Craig got two top ten guys for a combination of three. So I'm just looking through some of the teams and trying to see how things went in ours. And this just shows that you don't want to be the last guy to fill up your running backs. The guy in our league who was pretty much the last person to fill up his running backs ended up with his three running backs are now Jay Ajayi, Alex Collins, Lamar Miller, which, I mean... Could be could, be, could worse. be worse, but you still don't you don't trust any of those to be your running back one necessarily. But you spend yeah. well. The big question is how much do you spend on each one? Thirty six, thirty, and twenty nine. Okay, so you didn't get a discount no, on them you either. Didn't. So that's why it came down. That's the we end up spending a t- you know what? How much did he spend here? Ninety ninety five dollars here combined. When you could have just taken. Shoot, you could have taken 70 of that, 70 something that got one, taken 65 of that and got Barkley, and then taken another 30 and got one of those. I mean, think about that. Would you rather have the Jay Ajayi, Alex Collins, Lamar Miller combo, the, the you know, trio there, or would you rather have Saquon Barkley and one of those three? Oh, 100%, you know, Barkley and one so of them. So that's what you, don't be afraid to go spend it on the guy there. 
Because once you get down a level, you're going to be the one scrambling for just average, basically. <laughs> it's going to, you're going to overspend just to fill out the roster, and then you're not going to get values late anyway. It's just not going to happen. Just, and I think people sometimes get too conservative and wait too long to start doing something. So I just, I think that's the way to go, especially if you're in, if you're in, if you're an auction veteran and you're with somebody who's newer to it. You know, they're gonna probably wait. Don't wait around. Just start setting the market yourself. Yeah, take advantage of that. And it, I mean, it's always difficult because you're gonna see a value next to their name when you come into the you know draft room. Don't be afraid to set your own. Say, hey, I I think he's worth ten more dollars than that. I mean, obviously Zeke wasn't valued at seventy six. But Craig knows that the team he wants to build, he's going to be the linchpin. I need him. I'm willing to spend that much. Go get him. Don't you know? Don't be too afraid to spend a little extra, even though the value doesn't say it. It's worth it. Well, if you would have used Rube sheets, <laughs> I'm telling you, it actually <laughs> it actually valued him much higher than what I got him. Did it? Really? It really did. So, um, you know, there's other other sources to try to find out what you should be valuing these guys for, and yeah, definitely don't feel like you're an ESPN, just ignore, ignore that total or that, you know, that price text of the name. It means nothing once the draft starts. Absolutely nothing. I mean, we're going to do that. We have another draft coming up on Saturday. What are the chances it's going to be anything like this? I mean. Oh, then <laughs> this one is our, our, you know, kind of the, the league that all of us want to win. It's in it with a bunch of very good players. We do it live it gets very heated in the room, <laughs> and I guarantee that it is going to be even more pressure on everyone. So I'm actually very glad that I did this one or got this one under my belt. I'm definitely going to do a couple more. And if you're going to be in an auction league, I would highly recommend ripping out you know at least five of these. Just get used to the process. I know it sounds really funny, but the same like it really does work, and you really do want to have a little bit of exercise with it because things change so quickly, and you want to know what other people are kind of thinking about. It's almost like mass psychology of like, oh, what do we actually, what do people actually think about Kirk Cousins? What do people actually think about Sammy Watkins? It, you'd be surprised how much it changes, you know, average draft position when you're putting money towards them compared to you know, what they are on every single list. If you I actually will. think that is the biggest key in the world is if you're going to be in an auction draft, you think you need to do a bunch of auction drafts ahead of time. You really do because you just, you need to get comfortable. That's the main thing. It's being comfortable in that draft. It's not the same snakes. Pretty. We did uh we did a couple listener league um, drafts tonight, actually in snake drafts. I'm comfortable the whole time in those. There's nothing uncomfortable about that. Auction's uncomfortable. No, there's, I mean, there's no pressure. Yeah, there's no pressure because, okay, the pick comes up. I have to take someone. I mean, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. But auction comes up and you have a chance at every single person. Who do you want to throw money at? Where can you get the value? Who do you have to go out and get? Um, and then on top of that, <laughs> every person is kind of like trying to stop you from getting that person. Even you, even Craig, my friend, bid me up knowing that I wanted a guy. Not working with Juju. me at all. Is that on brutal. Juju, I believe? Yeah. I could have gotten for so much cheaper. <laughs> oh, that's another that's a, another good point is know who you're going against. Know who they like. You know? If you know who your opponents yeah. like, who they want. But you don't don't do it in a way that you're uncomfortable if you got the guy for that price. That's what you know you can't do. Yeah. I mean you can bid people up, but be very careful. Cause I've seen it many times where people end up with a player they don't need and they spend, you know, say $25 on them, but they're just going to sit on their bench or they don't even like them that much because they were trying to stick someone else with the price. Yeah, tag. that's the problem. Don't, don't do the bid up unless you're willing to take the guy. And I would have been perfectly willing to take Juju if that, if it came down to it at that point. Yeah. I mean, absolutely. I mean, it's just one of those, I, I got him for 20, which I personally think is a value. But I also think that you started bidding me up when it was like thirteen because it was later in the draft and everyone had spent and all the money. I was hurting. I only had one so, you know, wide receiver at the point. That point, I had Brandon Cooks, and I needed somebody else. Right. So if you ended up with him, yeah, it wouldn't have Instead been a big I got, deal. Ugh, Sammy Watkins, but <laughs> he's my number two. Oh God. Uh, don't feel bad, my. Uh, I still haven't figured out who my running back two really is. <laughs> it's a it's a committee back right <laughs> You're now. You're hoping one of those rookies, you know, does something. You have a few of them, so. 
Yeah, I, I just load it up with no, possibility. Saying, that's, but that's what every draft has to be different. I know another person in our league, they ended up with uh, just the way it went. They ended up with Rob Gronkowski, which they never expected to do. But sometimes the value is there and you end up with a player you weren't necessarily expecting. It just changes your whole strategy. But don't I, – that's why I'm saying you should probably go in with a couple different strategies, a couple different ideas. Have the main one, but feel free to you know break off from it and just plan that way. Just, you know – because you, you don't know it's you can do all the planning in the world i think we, we've done this before we've we've set actually we've set dollar totals you know we can't go over this you know and then we just wait and it gets that total and I, I can't do it i think you gotta just be you gotta you just gotta adjust you really do so oh shoot i pulled up i wanted to pull up rube yeah. sheets here to see what they said zeke was and this is how i knew zeke was gonna be a value they after you put all our keepers in they put him at 89 dollars I really wish I would have seen that. <laughs> I just I knew it would work out. It's uh Oh man. But it, it is, it's so crazy. And I, I think in auction you also have to be aware of tiers a little more. Because, you know, I'm I'm willing to spend a little more money in order to grab a guy in another tier compared to auction where you know, well, I'm either taking this wide receiver or this running back, and you know, they probably won't get back to me. But there's no you know, there's no tension there. On this one, I can say, is this last running back in this tier worth $55? Or am I willing to punt that tier and go and put my money somewhere else? It's it's a completely different mindset. Really, though, I think once it starts going, I don't think you even have – you shouldn't worry about what somebody else went for and that you might get you might be getting a lesser player for more money than somebody spent, you know, on a player you think's better. Because you can't think that way, you know? That that's you're gonna you're gonna lose out if you do that too often. You just I think you get I mean use it as a baseline, but don't don't hold steady to that because if I mean like you know, like saying people went for Delvin Cook went for more than Zeke did, but you had to if you wanted that running back. So don't worry about the prior values too when it comes when it comes to if you needed the guy and he's the end of the tier, you're gonna have to spend higher than maybe he should be worth. But I don't think anybody should be worth anything in an auction anymore. <laughs> Yeah, I totally agree. It's very true. Um, you know, and once again, it just goes towards knowing who's left and who is of value to you because that's why I love buy auctions as well. I, I feel like when you hit snake drafts, there's a, probably a, a large <laughs> amount of rounds where I would much rather dip down and get someone, but you feel like you're trapped by getting one of these next top, you know, 15 guys. Like you don't want to go outside of that range. Here you can grab five really high end guys and then fill in the rest with $1 guys. But Hey, I think that they could turn into something. And that's what I love about that. You can make your team the way you, you know, I was actually it. maybe slightly, I don't know if I'm kind of slightly surprised on tight end prices. Sometimes we see tight ends go for just nothing. We actually had a few of them go for a decent amount. I mean, compared to what maybe normally we have them. Gronk went for 28. That's probably a typical Gronk number, but then Kelsey went for 20, which yeah, it's a pretty good price for Kelsey, but Ertz went for 10. Ertz, out of those three, that feels like the best value then. And then Evan Ingram went for 12, actually. Wow. Yeah. Well, it's funny, too, to look at ESPN values because I remember looking at Gronk, and I'm pretty sure he was valued at like 41, and I thought that was crazy. So if you saw that value, you know, you'd be like, oh, no, there's no way I'm going to get Gronk. And you, and you went game plan for it, and then he would go for 28, and you're like, oh, you know, I should have went for him. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess I, I just, me personally, I can't pay for a tight end. $2 is about the max I do. It's typically it. In I think we both held to that in this one. You you spent a dollar, I spent two. So that's our combined. You have one quarterback, one tight end, you spent $4. I spent, yeah. I have two quarterbacks, one tight end. I spent five. So <laughs> I think that's what you stick to. Yeah. I mean, you just, yes, yeah, too good a value. And I, you know, I, I don't worry about too much, especially, you know, the tight ends that I thought were, you know, much better than the guy I could have gotten for a dollar. You know, they all went higher and they all got paid for it. It was all double digits and I wasn't willing to do that. So, you know, I'll take the guy I believe in for a buck and then put my money other places. All right. I don't know if I have anything more for this one. We'll probably have some more thoughts after next week's auction. Maybe some some new 
thing will pop up. But I think my takeaway from today is go spend for your the guy you want early. Get him. That's what I would do. I think that's the way to do it. So that'll do it for this. We'll be back tomorrow with another episode. We'll talk to you guys then. <laughs>